Today we're gonna make an Apex Legends Arena guide. Arenas just came out. It's insanely fun. I'm so happy they added another game mode to Apex. I was a bit skeptical, thinking that maybe it was just kind of gonna be kind of boring. But after trying it, I played 99 games. We're gonna play our 100th game in a second here. I want to make a quick guide slash tips and tricks video for you guys. And uh, the first thing I want to say is that Arenas is insanely fun. I definitely recommend you guys trying it. Alright, so. So the first thing I want to talk about is three stacking versus solo. When you three stack, um, where basically you group up with friends, your skill based matchmaking is going to get amplified up extremely high. So what's going to happen is you're going to play against other three stacks of your similar rank. When you solo queue, it's more random. So you play with people of different ranks. It's kind of like pubbing. The next thing I want to talk about is legends. So we'll talk about legends first. Uh, I have my stats up on screen if you guys are interested in seeing, um, but we're going to talk about arena legends. So it's kind of similar to BR, but there are a lot of a lot of legends uh, that are a lot better in arenas compared to BR, and there's some that are even worse. Uh, I'm just going to quickly go through all of them. I think um, the, the entire top row are all very, very strong in arena, like super strong. Um, Caustic is not very good in arena because the one thing that you guys need to understand about arenas is that the fights aren't going to get third partied. Just like in BR. In BR, you have to try and finish fights quickly because there's a high chance that you're going to get third partied. Um, in Arena, the fights can last a really long time. You take your time with fights, so you don't need to rush anything. Uh, you can play a lot of different positions on the map. Um, playing against Caustic and BR, they can just get into a building, barrel up, and be fine because you can't fight them for a long time because you'll just get third partied if you do. So Caustic and Arena, honestly, not that top, like not a top tier pick. He's not absolutely terrible, but he's not like a super insane pick. Mirage, honestly, really underrated. I don't think he's a top tier character in arenas, but he he's a he's definitely if you're good with them, he can be a good character to play. The thing is, if you're in a one v one and you throw a Mirage clone and they shoot that, you can swing the other direction on them and get the first shot on them. Also, in arenas, Mirage Ultimate is actually really good. But the one thing to understand is in arenas uh, during the the early game and mid game, you don't really use your ults very much. So this is uh, something you have to consider for the late game. But Mirage also has Stealth Revive, so you can buy Golden Backpack and get Stealth Revives, which is also very strong. Um, Octane, one of the top characters in Arena. He has an insanely good passive. Another thing to remember about Arena is that your passive is free. So every character with a passive uh, gets to keep it. And Octane has a really good one where you get Self Heal. And his speed boost is really good. His Octane Jump Pad is really good. Watson is probably the absolute worst character in arenas. Her passive shield regeneration is way too slow to matter, and her abilities are almost completely useless. Crypto is okay-ish, um, not one of the best characters. His drone can give your teammates wall hacks so that maybe they can get a pick here and there, but he'll just be forced to sit in a corner while doing that. And his ultimate can't be bought till the later rounds, which really is expensive. Revenant, I haven't played too much with Revenant. I think you can do some combos with him, like Octane Rev combos, but overall, I don't think he's one of the best characters in arena. But maybe when a meta composition starts to come out in like 3v3 arena uh, scrims or whatever, maybe Revenant will become one of the top tier characters. But this guide is mostly going to be focused on solo queuing. And uh, I don't think Revenant and solo queue is really worth it, to be honest. Loba is very, very strong in arena. She has the ability of holding off angles, which is the same as Pathfinder and Wraith. They can you know play really aggressive and then use their abilities to get away when they want to also lobo ultimate when you get it is really good for stealing the loot out of the bins and the way that the bins work in arena is it gives you a bunch of extra meds and that actually is really good because if you can get all the meds you can win the poke battles or win the long fight uh rampart is not very good in arena some people think like oh yeah i'll just put down a shield and i'll sit behind it well like i said before in arenas you have a lot of time to fight and you have a lot of ways to reposition so her walls can just easily be destroyed. You also have a lot of amp ammo in arenas, especially with the game crates coming down. It's not really worth it. Her ultimate's absolutely terrible, and her walls are okay, but she's not going to be a top tier character. Um, Horizon is a little underrated right now. I don't think she's insane in arenas, but um, on some maps like Artillery, for example, the her ability to give your whole team vertical mobility is really strong. Her passive is really strong for movement, and her ultimate is really good when you're able to buy it. Fuse, kind of crap in arenas. His ultimate's really bad. His, his uh, grenade clusters are okay, but you can still buy a bunch of grenades anyways, so it's kind of whatever. Valkyrie is kind of like uh, a better arena version of Horizon. Uh, she gets the free passive where she can fly around, so she's able to take vertical height really well. 
She also has the uh, rockets, like AoE stun, which is insanely good because if someone's hiding behind a box, you just throw the rockets there and they're forced to move or eat the stun. So her ability to have like a a strong throwable on as an ability, as a tactical is, is really good. Her ultimate is kind of useless, but you can use it on like some of the bigger arena maps. Uh, overall, really quickly with the top row that I was talking about, Bangalore is insane because her passive is good. You can buy digital threats in arena, so you can use smoke grenades and get a lot of value out of that. And her ultimate's actually really uh, good in arena as well. Uh, Wraith is just Wraith, you know, she's insane. You can play aggressive, phase back. Her portal can hold different angles. She has a small hitbox. She got buffed with the move of lower profile. Pathfinder is really fast off the beginning, so he can get the bins before anyone else. He can hold off angles with grapple, take vertical mobility. Lifeline is one of the top tier characters in arena because you can buy golden backpack, get free revives. Uh, her heal drone heals insanely quick now. Her hitbox is really small, hard to hit. Super good character. Gibraltar is one of the best fighting characters in the game. Also good at taking poke because he gets a gun shield with 50 HP that refreshes every eight seconds, I believe. Um, one of the best characters. And then Bloodhound is also very good because having wall hacks for your whole team is ridiculous. But the one thing you need to remember about Bloodhound is that your, your tacticals have a limited amount of use in arenas. So you'll have to buy them after you use them. All right, so after covering all the legends individually, I'm not going to break down compositions too much because uh, in solo queue arena, people kind of just pick what they want. But if you're playing with friends, a uh, good general composition to play is like Wraith, uh, Valk, Bloodhound can be really good on some maps, Pathfinder. It's just characters that have good self-survivability with movement tend to be really strong. You could also run Bangalore comps. Pretty much anything from the top row plus Octane or Loba or Valk are like good go-to characters to mix with each other. All right, so going on to the guns, what I want to talk about real quick is uh, I have a picture up right here of the of the guns. You got to remember in arenas that your currency changes. So in the earlier rounds, you have less money to spend. In the later rounds, you have more. So this really changes the, the guns that you buy. The first thing I want to say is that what I've been doing lately is 100% of the time, I always buy Mozambique and it's always my secondary gun. So I'll spend the rest of my money on another gun plus batteries throwables usually which are arc stars and my tactical ability i really don't buy my ultimate that much i normally play wraith by the way just so you guys know um this might change depending on the character you're playing like lifeline for example needs to buy a golden backpack so that changes the way you spend but i'm gonna revolve this guide around wraith because most people play wraith and that's just kind of a good general character so the one note i do want to make about the first couple rounds is that right now as far as i can tell wingman is really really strong in organized 3v3 arenas but in solo queue when you're just playing l star is ridiculous l star is so 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 strong in arenas mainly because when you buy l star you upgrade it to get a red dot so you can actually see when you're shooting and it just does so much damage and when you're shooting it the other person can't even see because there's just red balls of, of sunlight flashing their eyeballs blinding them in real life this gun needs to be balanced when you're shooting it when you're getting shot at also in arenas, I think it needs to be made more expensive because this is a gun that doesn't require attachments. So when you do buy it, it's fully kitted. So really good first and second round guns I would suggest are L-Star. Uh, the problem with Vault is that this is a gun that gets really strong when you have attachments, but in the first round, you can't buy attachments. So I, that's why I recommend L-Star. Same with R9. Wingman is, is good first round if you're really good with your shots. So top picks, Wingman and L-Star. The one thing I do want to note about characters and guns though, is that you should pick whatever you you are good at. If you're not an Apex Predator or Master like level player, composition tends to not as matter as much. You should really just pick whatever you're comfortable with and whatever you're good at because that's what's going to help you succeed most in arenas. And just focus on communication, you know, individual mechanics, stuff like that. That that'll help you the most. All right, so moving into round three. When you're able to, all right, I just showed my, my first two rounds real quick. Um, I buy Mozambique, Wingman, and Ability, or Mozambique, uh, and L-Star, and I'll upgrade it. And then I think you have the ability of buying uh, Ability as well, uh, which is my phase. All right, so moving on to round three, when you start to get more money, um, this is where you want to consider, like, let's say you have endless currency, you can buy whatever you want. This is where you really want to buy whatever you're best with. Personally, on Wraith, I think my top picks are going to be Wingman, R99, Volt, uh, Flatline, and Bow. Bow is also very good. And R301. 
R301 is like my go-to normally when I'm playing just solo queuing just because it beams really, really hard. But this is where you have the option of pretty much buying whatever you want. Uh, Havoc with turbochargers can be really good. There's a lot of different guns that you can buy in arenas. I think when you're solo queuing, um, the guns that you buy doesn't really matter too much. Uh, bow is very good at doing poke damage. The problem with bow is that it's not very good up close. So if you are buying bow, you might want to skip out on buying the Mozambique and maybe buy another gun that can help you up close, like an EVA or something, or I don't know, like uh, L-Star, maybe L-Star plus bow. But yeah, guns overall, usually the guns that you just never buy are like RE45, PK, honestly, unless you're playing like Gibraltar, it's not really too worth it. I'd rather have an EVA 8 or Mozambique. The one thing people need to know about Mozambique is they got buffed and it, they lowered the, the pellets. So it actually hits really well at long distance. Like, let's see, like 30 meters away, you can hit for like 30 to 40 damage. It's kind of insane. After talking about the guns here, there's not really too much to say, honestly. The gun choices you buy really depends on the character that you're playing. Um, Mastiff, you should stay away from that. It's too expensive. Spitfire is kind of insane. Devotion Turbocharger is insane. Even some of the snipers are pretty good. You probably want to stay away from the 30-30 and the longbow, but everything else is okay. Charge rifle is all right if you're trying to burn meds, but overall, just pick the guns that you feel most comfortable with. The coolest thing about Arena is that you can buy literally anything you want, and you can practice literally anything you want. The one thing I do want to mention with uh, the economy, which is where I'm going to lead into economy a little bit, is that you don't really need to focus on saving currency that much. It's not really that relevant if you do the Mozambique strat where you're not spending anything on a secondary. So every round, you can pretty much spend all the money you want. And one thing I didn't realize the first day of first couple of days of playing arena is that throwables are really, really insane. Like arc stars, grenades and thermites are absolutely ridiculous. They're so strong. They're really good. Like let's say you hit someone for 50 and they're trying to heal behind a box. You just throw an arc star behind the box and they're forced to either eat the arc star or move out in the open. That's one of the things that you need to remember. So always try to buy at least two arc stars if you can afford it, sometimes even three in the later rounds. Uh, the only time you don't buy them is like the first couple rounds. Like the first round, you don't buy one. The second round, you might buy one. Make sure you always have your, depending on the character you're playing, always have your tactical at least at one or two. Um, or at least at two, I mean, because you get one for free if you don't have any. And the, the next thing to buy is batteries, cells, and med kits. You don't need to buy syringes. The reason you buy meds is because in arenas, the fights last so long. So if you take too much damage over time, you're going to run out of heals and you're just going to die by having no heals. There are two supply crates on each map that give you a Phoenix kit, two batteries, and a med kit. And if you have or a support character like Lifeline, it gives you even more like cells and syringes. But you're not always guaranteed to get that. So if you have a strat that allows you to get those, then you can save money by not buying as many batteries. But you do need to keep in mind that you have to make sure you buy enough meds to where you don't run out of meds. When you kill someone, you can take their gun, their ammo, and their meds. So you can keep that in mind as well. Or you can randomly hit finishers for shield as well, but that's usually not going to happen. It's not very consistent to rely on that. So overall for guns, buy Mozambique for a secondary. Buy a good primary that you depend on that is going to win you the fight. Don't worry about saving currency that much because like, it would be like don't be like, oh, I'm just going to buy an alternator and a Mozam and I'm going to be fine. You know, sometimes alternator can be okay, but it's going to be a lot harder to use alternator when people are just going to buy L-Star and it's the same price and L-Star just does way more. It does way, way more. So try to get good at L-Star. That's definitely of a recommendation of mine. Another thing I want to mention is when you are solo queuing in Arena, usually the way it, it plays out is positioning at the beginning. It doesn't really matter too much. In 3v3 Arenas, when you're playing organized fights, positioning is really important. But in solo queue Arena, you have a lot of time to run around, loot the bins, loot the crafting materials so you can keep the materials for next round and save up on a, on a bunch of credits for the next round and play slow. So I definitely recommend that. And uh, that'll help you with your economy overall. So other things to keep in mind with arenas is that your play style is going to change depending on the map, depending on the characters that you have, depending on the characters that the other team has, depending on the, the guns that you have, your economy, depending on the economy of the other team, stuff like that. So your play style is ever changing. There's not like a, a, a strict answer I can give you on exactly how to play. But the general rule of arenas is High ground is king, so if there's a zone that finishes on high ground, try to take high ground. Don't run out of meds and uh, play with your teammates. Very important to hold each other's angles and play with your teammates. 
play together don't play solo yeah that's all the tips i'm gonna jump into a game real quick and then just uh give you guys um tips and tricks as i'm playing we got a mirage on our team i'm just kidding he, he's fine everyone's fine i'm gonna pick wraith like usual if i if someone picked wraith i would most likely pick uh lifeline or uh Loba or something, or Horizon. Lifeline's usually my go-to secondary pick. Alright, so we have a Mirage. Mirage is not the end of the world. We get Stealth Revive. Also, Mirage can be okay-ish at fighting because his clones can, like, distract people a little bit. Um, Crypto is not the greatest, but we'll see how it works. He said real question mark? So the first round, I'm going to buy Mozambique because it's completely free. I'm also going to buy the L-Star and upgrade to Red Dot so I can actually see when I'm shooting. And then I'm going to buy a uh, Phase. The good thing about buying Phase is that I might not need two Phases this round. But if I don't use them, then I keep my t my unused Tactical into the next round. So buying the second Phase isn't a waste if I don't use it. Uh, if I use one of them, then it's a little bit of a waste. Because if you have zero Tactical abilities, it gives you a free one um, the next round. But it's fine. I can't really use my other 50 currency for anything else. I could buy a med kit or whatever, but it's not really that big of a deal for a Sean to buy a med kit. So what I'm doing here is I'm rushing straight to the bin. Um, then after that, since my teammates aren't in threat, I'm going to run to this currency here. So each of us get an extra 200 currency the next round. Now I'm going to start playing near my team a little bit. We have a lot of head glitch right here. This is one of the things that just playing a lot of arenas, you can learn like really strong spots to hold. This is one of them on artillery because it's a head glitch. If they try and push you, they take a lot of damage. So we have wall hacks. I'm actually going to... Oh, there's a guy behind us. I'm going to keep my phase here and I'm actually going to pop a battery. So I saw two of them, but I didn't realize that their third actually flanked. So I need to keep an eye on that. You're getting pushed on your right, on your right, mine. Help my teammate kill the horizon. I'm actually gonna thirst this guy real quick. God, I can't even see this guy. Oh my god. That guy took so much damage. I like the crazy thing about L Star is you literally can't see when you're shooting, and it's even worse for another person. But I didn't realize that that Wraith just sat in the corner like that. Alright, so we actually have a lot of currency in here. I'm gonna do the same thing and just buy the Mozambique. And then we're gonna buy, let's buy two, this is probably gonna do two batteries, two arc stars, and then buy L star again. Um, the last 75 currency, I could either go. upgrade my Mozam to get a white bolt, or I could buy uh, two extra cells for, for heals, which I'm gonna do that. Um, so one of the things is with Mozambique strat is that it's really good because it's, it hits for like 30 to 40. So it's a good way to finish people. Also, it saves you a lot of currency, and on top of that, it uh, can be replaced for any gun that you get off the game crate later on. All right, so I'm gonna watch the the bin here. So the wraith opened up the bin. Like I got all the meds. I'm gonna phase away to my teammates because I don't want to challenge that guy. Not because I don't think I can win the 1v1, but because I don't know exactly where his teammates are, so I don't want to get caught uh, getting in a 2v1 really important to play with my team here. Dude, you can't even see this guy. It's actually crazy. I gotta shoot my L-Star and it's just invisible. I'm actually gonna try and cut him off over here. Here's my other phase, because the zone's coming in. The Wraith is gonna die to the zone. Dude, I'm lagging. I think the other guy's behind us. Kill the horizon. Nice. And then kill the octane. So right there, I slipped behind the box because I knew the horizon was behind me, but I wanted to watch the octane because I knew he was coming in. So I had to focus the octane first, then turn around and focus the horizon once she swung on me, and then turn around and focus the uh, octane again. So this round, we have a lot of uh, currency. I want to buy a second ability, two batteries, two throwables. And then I could spend um, money on a gun. Wingman could be decent. Um, but I think since I need to pump out a lot more damage, I'm probably going to buy R9 and upgrade it as much as possible. Let's see if I can do... 
This is fine. This is fine. I'll do R9 white, my mech. It's not going to be that strong. I think actually it's better to do all star here again. Uh, if I had more currency, I'd probably buy like a 301 or something. This could have been a, a good wingman round. But like the cool thing about arenas is that you. Oh, I'm like kind of lagging a little bit. The cool thing about arenas is that um, there's a lot of diversity in different guns that you can buy. Oh, he bought Spitfire. I just hit him for like 60. Spitfire is very, very good in arenas. You guys got to be careful when you're fighting against Spitfire. Oh, we hit him for a lot. Octane got knocked. I think there's also a Wraith over here. Oh, Horizon. Okay, we got a 2v1. Put the thirst on that guy, so I don't have to worry about him getting randomly revived. I don't know where the other dude is. The thirst on him. But the other guy thirsts on my teammates. I'm actually going to grab the Spitfire because Spitfire is ridiculous. Grab all these heals. Now we have a 2v1. He's, this guy's struggling to finish my down teammate. Alright, this guy is like breathing into his headset. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get rid of that. I think I heard this guy go top right. Oh, he's on there. On there. Okay. Alright, so basically, I need to not look at this as a 2v1. I need to look at it as a 1v1. Because I can't trust my teammate to uh, stay alive here. I'm throwing the arc star there because he has to run away. Nice. This type of arc star is really good because he either has to run away from it. If he stands there and challenges me, the arc star hits him. If he pushes forward, then I get to shoot him with my Spitfire for free. Did you guys notice how blinding the L star was right there, by the way? I couldn't see anything. The only reason I was able to hit him is because he was stuck in a corridor. That gun is so ridiculously stupid. It's worse than like season one muzzle flash. So this is where I love to use uh, 301. One of my favorite guns in the game to use. And I'm going to buy that instead of anything else. I do have 225 currency. I'm going to buy a med kit here and uh, cells. Just so I have a little bit extra of heals. I don't really care about buying an upgraded Mozambique. Because like if I thirst someone, I could take their gun. Mozambique without a bolt is still good at like finishing people. So it's kind of whatever. My primary gun is going to be 301 anyways. I see Horizon top left. Um, I don't think that they are going for this meds here. So I'm probably going to grab... Oh, the fucking... Wraith is got Wow, he actually did hit me for a lot of there. I hit him for 100 too. There's no way he challenges, right? Alright, so he got the batteries, but I'll take the Phoenix, I guess. The good thing is I still have another battery left. The bad thing is they probably got the other bins as well. If they got the other bins, then we are going to lose the long range poke battle. So we need to make sure that we the type of fights we take are going to be fights that finish quickly. Because I don't have a lot of extra heals. I can't take like 200 extra damage, you know what I mean? We'll see if they got this bin though. They didn't. Okay, so I have a lot of heals. Now I don't have to worry about losing or running out of meds. So the issue that we have right now is that they took high ground. But the good thing with that is that the zone finishes out here most likely so it's not really something we have to worry about if i had anvil receiver i'd probably just do some more poke damage against them from range but i don't really so i hit that guy the good thing is i hit him for 70 but the difference between 70 and a, and 100 is not really that much because he's probably just going to pop a battery on that health anyways i'm doing a good job of wasting his uh his resources I'm I'm running out of uh, meds a little bit. Um, the game crate, did the game crate come down? It did come down already. I didn't mean meds. I'm running out of ammo. But... Back down. Okay. I'm gonna use a phoenix kit for this because I have two, oh, and I have a lot of downtime. I can pop a one for free. Um, yeah. Can you back up to me, uh, patriarch? We're in zone. Really good spot here. That guy already ran out of meds. You see how that dude's not healing on the left side? He literally is out of meds. He's flanking left side. I need to heal. I hear the, the Wraith healing on the left side, so... Oh my god, Arch. Oh my god, Arch. Oh my god, Arch. 
Nice. Yo, good clutch. My teammate did a ton there. Good shit. Oh, was that the crypto? I, I'm actually not sure that was. I got arc star spammed. Yeah, that was. A, I think that was a really good game to explain kind of how arenas plays. Like, you know, the the characters you have changes how you play. The where the zone finishes changes how you play. The guns you have, the currency, everything. It's really a lot of fun. Arenas is one of the best ways to practice mechanics in Apex. Like one of the best tips I used to give people is, that were new to Apex was just play pubs, hot drop, and fight until you die, and then do the same thing over and over again. But now you can just play arenas. Like one of the things that new players in Apex need to learn is how to fight. And you can do that in arenas. And the coolest thing in arenas is that you can literally buy any character and any gun you want. So if you suck with the L-Star, you buy L-Star. If you suck with, with the, the Wingman, buy the Wingman. If you suck with the R301, buy the R301. You know, you can do whatever you want. Like this game mode is insanely fun. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys enjoy the tips and tricks. And I'm, I plan on making another one that's going to be more in-depth and advanced. But I wanted to just get a, uh, you know, like an introduction arena guide in and just explain everything overall yeah thanks for watching i appreciate it and uh stay tuned for the next one